it says that we should also stretch your curtains wide. It says, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. And as I looked and meditated on this, three things jump out at me, which is expand, lengthen, and strengthen. Expand, lengthen, and strengthen. And, and as I analyzed and I analyzed this thing, some things came to my mind. It says, enlarge the place of your tent, meaning for us as individuals, for us as Kosofe chapter, what is our tent? What do we need to enlarge? What do we need to stretch? And I looked at this word stretch. Uh, I'm not a gym, a gym fan, but I have some friends who are regular gym people. I try to exercise once in a while, but I I remember I have this watch that makes me walk 10,000 steps every day, you know. And so stretch is something that is not comfortable. And so for us as Kosofe chapter, we're getting to a place for us to align with this growth mandate. We're going to get into uncomfortable scenarios. It says, do not hold back. And um, one day, because I do some other ministry stuff. And one thing God has been teaching me is the place of excellence. And, and uh, I read somewhere where the man said, excellence is the platform. And, and said that God had told him long time ago that when excellence is put in place, he comes on board. And that's why I got to understand in, in First Kings, when Solomon built the temple, that the Bible says, you know, the way the temple was constructed, I mean, the first service, the Bible says that the priest could not minister. Why? Because of the glory of God. And I've come to learn that there's a place that excellence attracts God. If you're in doubt, go and read Revelation. When you read Revelation and understand how God builds heaven, you know that God is an excellent God. And for us in Kosofer chapter, one of the things, and even I myself, we must begin to embrace seriously is that excellence, you know? And that's why it says, do not hold back. Now, when I looked at this, uh, and I'll share some funny things, you know, in Nigeria currently, price of yesterday, uh, somebody said, oh, uh, what was happening? Um, everywhere is quiet. And I said, with 500 Naira per liter, movement these days are measured. And everybody was laughing on the platform. And, you know, somehow also with 500 Naira per liter, our mindset has to be reset. I'll say it again. Our mindset has to be reset because God has been dealing with me because you know what happens? 500 Naira per liter. What does that mean for every individual on this platform? Your cost of living has gone up anyhow you look at it. And so because your cost of living has gone up, do you know that some things are going to suffer? You're going to go back on some things. And sometimes I have seen one of the things people hold back on is their support for expanding God's kingdom. And so in this season, we cannot afford to hold back. We must also lengthen our cords and strengthen our stakes. Now, just four quick things I will just share for us to align with this growth mindset, with this growth mandate. Number one, you see, for us to align with our growth mandate, we need to build a community. The truth is this, as I thought of this meeting, one of the things impressed in my heart is like, where is the love? You know, I look at the WhatsApp platform. I said, how many people do I even engage on this platform? You see, we need to come to a place of maturity. I'm doing a research and study on talking to strangers currently. And the truth is that it is the community that helps us. You see, that's one of the key things in that verse is strengthen. How do you strengthen Kosofe chapter? It's community-wide. So when you look at the platform, when you ask yourself, how many people do I know here? And, and why is community key? If you look at Acts chapter 4, the Bible says that they were of one mind. They had all things in common. And because they had all things in common, there was no lack. And, and you see, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9. It says, it is better to be two than one because you will have a better reward for your labor. And the Bible says one chases a thousand, two chases 10,000. So now we're 11 on this platform. The truth is that if we gather to pray 
as 11 people, 10 people, the impact of our prayer will be more than when five or six people are gathered. And so for us to strengthen, we need to build the community. We need to build the tribe. We need to build a support system. What is a support system? That support system is who can you call to pray with you? If you look at the Kosofe, because you see, for us as a chapter, who are we? We are the senders. And, and the truth is that as senders, senders also have needs. What support system have we built in place? There's an interesting book out there. It's called The Jewish Phenomenon. And in that book, it says, it says something. It says that the Jew, if the Jew has a bakery, the Jew that has a school will only buy from that bakery. Now, the person that has the bakery, his children will only go to the school that is owned by the Jew. And they did, I mean, this is a global research. And they say that the difference between the Jews and other tribes is that in the Jew, money enters and doesn't go out. Unlike the blacks in America, they say those ones, money goes out. So for us to strengthen, we need to deliberately build a support system. We need, and that's why I, I believe that this season is calling for people that are called the Barnabas. What is Barnabas? Barnabas is the son of encouragement. Like, the, the, the next like, thing like, is... The next thing, they don't want again. the next thing is we need to develop competence. The Bible says in um, Isaiah, it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. When I thought of this fuel crisis and I'm like, wow, your expenses are going to go up. And the Holy Spirit said, yes, when your expenses go up, it means your competence has to go up. It means you need to begin to solve bigger problems so you get bigger money. So as individuals said, wisdom and knowledge. So what is it calling for? For us to grow, each person has to build his competence. Each person, and that embraces that excellence. Each person has to develop competence. Each person must look at where am I now? Because the truth is this. If you are earning 50,000 Naira and you're going to be spending now 30,000 for work, the truth is what you have, your resources has shrinked. So what does that mean? I need to earn a hundred thousand naira. You would not earn that if your competence does not grow. The third thing I believe for us to align with our growth mandate is around for us to take territories. You see, you cannot break forth to the right and to the left without coming or having a warfare mindset. One of the things I begin to see, because you see, one of the things I believe we need to do for our missionaries is to give them adequate prayer cover. Why? The Bible says that you cannot go to a strong man's territory and collect his goods unless you bind him. And so we cannot just go to a field thinking we'll get souls. It's not going to happen. We have to break down barriers. And for me, it's the same thing I'm beginning to learn. That you see, certain times, I'll, I'll share a, a funny, a, 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 two things. I'll just share a testimony. I had a trip. I had to go to Morocco. And my, 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 um, my passport has expired. And as I sat down, I thought of it. I said, no, it was about to expire. It, they won't give me a visa if I don't get it renewed. And the process was long. And I just stayed in prayer. I said, Lord, is this trip by you? And he said, yes. And I knew that it was a warfare. Long and short, if every step of the way, every step of the way, it was prayer. I sat down, I was like, God, where do I get? I had some friends in immigration. They said, okay, Mr. Briggs, go to Kano. And the way God orchestrated, but I had to show up in Kano. It was literally throughout the day I was praying in tongues. I got my passport in six hours. But what am I saying? If we don't have that mindset, so if I did not want reach out my faith, if I did not board that flight, if I did not do those things I needed to do, I would have not gotten that passport. I would have not gone to Morocco. And in the process, I might just say it was in God's will. So for us in Kosofe, we must have that mindset attitude that it is warfare. 
We are in a warfare where capro is going to different fields. People are being moved around. The key thing is what is how are we praying? How are we um, engaging? How are we engaging? The Bible says that the Bible says that nothing can be given to you unless it is given to him from above. And that is why people join the occult. That is why people join clubs. Why? Because they need to go to that realm to get things. When, when the devil tempted Jesus, he said, look, all of this is, is mine. Worship me and I will give you. So that's why you see, and this is the challenges we face in Nigeria. That is the hands of government, government is in the hands of occultic people. But you see, God has created a Goshen. And so for us to expand and align with our growth mindset, the key thing you need to ask yourself, which territory are you taking? If you need everybody on this platform, you need to revisit your 2023 goals. What were they? Did you even have them? What are you doing? Are you thinking expansion? Because the Bible says when it comes to strengthen, it says occupy until I come. But you see, God is a businessman. He gives you five talents, so you go get 10, and he's happy. And that's why it is that mindset of taking territories. And finally, we need to align with our growth mindset. We need expansion of God's kingdom. For growth to happen, expansion has to happen. And one of the things the Holy Spirit said to me is that expansion of God's kingdom is using God's resources. And that is why we need to pray. Prayer is one of the resources God uses for his expansion. But you see in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17, it says that your, your kingdom shall be expanded through prosperity. And that is why you see with fuel at 500 naira per liter, the mindset has to be, I mean, currently now, I don't look at 500 per liter. I look at the God who has unlimited resources. The Bible says in Haggai chapter two, that look, I control the silver, I control the gold. And if you align with me, I will make them come to you. If you align with me, and so currently now, I began to, I looked at the, all the things I support. And funny enough, I did an increase. I said, Lord, I do this for this. I want to add this percent to it. Why? There is inflation. So if we are supporting missionaries and what you're giving a missionary is maybe $200, the truth is that there is a 14% inflation. So we can't be giving that, that missionary $200. We have to reach out our faith for a $220, $230. And is it not possible? Why? Because we serve a God who controls resources. And, and, and when you align with God, he will make it available with you. I'll close with this uh, testimony. Recently, I had an engagement. I do facilitations. I do trainings as one of the businesses I do. I had an engagement with a law firm. They had already told me how much they were going to pay me. It was a Saturday, and I sat down with God. I said, Father, I want double of that money. I mean, these people have told you this is what they are going to pay you. But you know, the Bible says God rules in the affairs of men. The Bible says the hearts of kings are in his hands, and he turns it into soul server. So I can't say, Lord, I want to expand your kingdom. You also need to expand my resources. Why? Because like I said, God is a business person. He gives you resources. So the resources he has given you, when he comes to create the account, because God is a businessman, God is an accountant. So the key thing is, I said, God, I, don't, I want to expand your kingdom financially. So I want double these people will pay me. And when I finished my engagement, the MD of this company came, shook my hand. The head of HR said, Mr. Briggs, please send your account details. It's like they're going to give you more. And guess what? They gave me double. Imagine if I asked for triple. And that thing taught me a lesson. For us to expand God's kingdom, God is not asking for us from our salaries and all of the mundane. God is asking for us to tap into his resources. The Bible says, finally, the Bible talked about taxes. And Peter went to Jesus and said, they say we should pay taxes. And that's what we face here. You have house rent. You have missionaries to take care of. And, and what they 
Jesus says, he says, whose call, whose head is on it? He says, it's Caesar. And he says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar. But you know, it is God's resources. So what did God say? God said, Peter, take your net, get your fish, your hook, go and go a fishing. Now, the truth is that if Peter was not a fisherman, God could not have given him that instruction. That is why you need to develop competence. So Peter knew how to fish and Jesus gave the instruction. The first fish you catch, open its mouth and you will see a coin. Miracles. And that's where I would like to say. So for us to expand God's kingdom, it is using God's resources. So four things, build a community, develop competence, be a, be understand that it's to, for us to take territory, it is warfare. And, and align with God by expanding his kingdom by using his resources. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Buki. Thank you, Sister Afrida. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. And thank you, everyone in attendance. Um, uh, that was a very great one, sir. We have been really blessed. We have been so much blessed by the Lord through uh, that talk. Uh, we have been blessed understanding that we need to build our community in the times that we have. We are not alone. We have to work and keep working as a family. And also, we have also learned that we should keep developing competency, meaning that if we want more, we have to do more. And also taking our terrority through prayer, meaning that um, as at this time that we are now, we are in a constant warfare. And one of the resources from heaven that we can use is to keep on praying and keep on praying and to keep on praying. And lastly, we also got that we are in the business of expanding God's kingdom. And we cannot do it by ourselves. We can only do it by God's resources. So every of God's resources, just like our speaker just said, that God's resources is unlimited. And the request we are we are asking of the Lord is what we will get. And um, we are so grateful, sir. God bless you, sir. So as we go ahead in this meeting, um, would encourage everyone to hold on to these things that God is telling us at this point in time, because these are the keys that the Lord is dropping to our hands for us to continue this journey on a smooth one. Thank you very much, sir. Um, the next agenda on today's meeting is our health talk. We know that the Lord has been blessing us spiritually. We know that he wants to touch our body also. He wants to touch our soul and also our spirits. So at this time, we are going to be moving to the health talk. And that will be taken by Dr. Ariola Shoumi that works in Boston Teaching Hospital, Michigan. So Ma, the floor is open for you. You're welcome, Ma. Thank you very much, Ma. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, I am just trying to load up the slide now. Okay. Morning, um, okay. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. We okay. can. Okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Leanne Ariel Ashomi. Um, I am currently a medical doctor at uh, University of Michigan Teaching Hospital, um, Brunson Hospital also. Um, I was uh, invited here to give a talk on cancer prevention, and so hopefully we're able to take some key um, facts, things we can use, and also help other people with. Um, it's been a passion of my medical education, making sure that um, medicine is easy to understand by um, lay people. It's easy for them to implement because that's what makes the greatest impact on healthcare. The biggest thing you can do for your health is done before you even get to the hospital. So let's uh, get started with it. <clears throat> what is cancer? Um, first of all, cancer is scary. Uh, I have had to deliver the news a couple times, and it's very unfortunate because cancer is one of those uh, diseases that almost becomes our identity. Um, no one says I'm a pneumonia patient. No one says um, 